Hello and welcome to my podcast. My name is Peter Doherty. I'm a Catholic priest and a psychologist who integrates my training in, the, in psychology and scripture studies to further understand the Gospels and seek out new pastoral teachings for Christians in these modern times. Today's podcast is from the Gospel of M- Mark, chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. This Gospel will be read in churches on June the 9th, 2024. This Gospel is perhaps one of the most unusual of all the Gospels. Jesus' family, including his mother Mary, are coming to take him home, believing that he is either possessed or has lost his mind. I am reminded of Mark chapter 6 verse 4 to 6, where Jesus states that no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I am surprised, as this passage suggests, that Mary did not fully understand her role as the mother of God when she spoke to the angel Gabriel in the Annunciation. This reading suggests that Mary had to grow in her understanding of the role that she played. We have examples where she often pondered and treasured in her heart many of the sayings of Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verse 19, for example. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to take anything away from Mary. Quite the opposite. Mary was able to say yes to the angel, even when she didn't fully understand. She was able to trust God and therefore be totally open to him. I have to admit that while I want to follow God's will in my life, I also want to know the details, to know how all this will play out in my life. Mary said yes without any of these conditions. So Mary and Jesus' family had to grow in understanding of Jesus' mission. They likely made mistakes and misunderstood Jesus. Does that sound like our life? There are no special allowances made. Hopefully we'll be encouraged when our faith grows slowly knowing others also had to experience a slowly developing faith. I wonder what Jesus said or did that would create such a reaction from his family. The second point I want to draw your attention to is Jesus' ability to make any event and make it a teachable moment. Today's Gospel is no exception. Jesus is accused of being possessed by members of his own family. Due to the lack of understanding of mental illness in those days, Strange behavior was often seen as possession. As I said, Jesus turns the events into a teachable moment. He encourages the people to think by asking them questions and providing factual information in order to challenge their conclusion. Jesus seizes this opportunity to let the people know they are more to God than just people. They are, in fact, his family. I want to take a moment and talk about families today. There have been much change in our understanding of family in this generation. We have, for example, single-parent families, blended families, same-sex couples, just to name a few. Despite these differences, families are still important for our personal development and have a huge impact on us. Children learn to share, work together, to love and take responsibility. They also learn their identity and develop a personal history with their siblings and parents. Jesus wants this type of relationship with us. In John chapter 15, verse 13 to 14, Jesus goes further and calls us friends, not just servants or followers. I'll develop this theme in a future podcast. I want to know that for some people, families can be toxic. I see this a lot when I was working with people with addictions. Some addicts came from toxic families that interfered with their treatment or or recovery. I'm sure you've heard the term dysfunctional families. I think all families have some form of dysfunction issues. It's just how families manage their dysfunctions that makes them dysfunctional or not. This gospel is another example of of the closeness God desires with his people. It is deep and intimate relationship where blood is thicker than water. Jesus is inviting the people to see God in a much closer way than previously taught or even experienced we might want to focus on what God's will is in our lives. Sadly, many people have projected much personal pain onto God. They have reduced their relationship with God to a fear-based relationship where God punishes, takes revenge, and demands that his people follow rules that often don't make sense. There seems to be more focus on sin than on blessings in some people's understanding of God. I'm wondering if their own experience of family has impacted on how they see God in their lives. Hopefully the readings that we've heard today will go a long way in dismantling the negative perception about who God is. Jesus teaches us 
about sin against the Holy Spirit as unforgivable. This seems to contradict Jesus' teaching on forgiveness. We see this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 31, Luke chapter 17, 4. I'm wondering exactly what it means. I'm not alone. Theologians from different Christian denominations have shared their understanding of this passage. Jesus had made it clear that all sins were forgivable, calling the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. We see this in John chapter 14, verse 17, 15, and 26. John 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 13, and warns us all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. We see this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Pope John Paul II writes, according to such an exegesis, blasphemy does not mean offending against the Holy Spirit. Rather, it consists about a refusal to accept the salvation which God offers us through the Holy Spirit. It seems that forgiveness is a free gift. The receiver does, not, does have the opportunity to refuse God's forgiveness. But I cannot imagine the circumstances that one would lead someone to refuse God's love and relation to I know people can be angry at God or feel that God doesn't care about their pain. These situations are not refusals of salvation. People do get angry at people they love or may be disappointed with the choices a loved one has made. This doesn't mean that the relationship is over. Let us remember that God is not some distantly being somewhere out there, only minimally involved in our lives, but is a vibrant, family member calling us to fullness. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join me next week when I examine the Gospel of Mark, who describes Jesus explaining what the kingdom of God is like. If this is the first time you've heard my podcast and are interested in hearing more, I urge you to listen to my podcast listed on the website. Every Sunday, I release a new podcast focusing on the Gospel for the following week. I invite you to listen to all my podcasts, and I hope the reflections are useful to you. The link is https colon forward slash forward slash a underscore psychologist underscore looks underscore at underscore scripture dot buzzsprout dot com. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my team, Heather Patel Doherty and Richard Coulon, who play an important part in the preparation of this podcast. If you have any questions or concerns, I can be reached by email at peter.doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y-O-M-I, at gmail.com. God bless and take care.